Okay, so we have our brick piece class created. Now we're going to create a new class called brick explosion. Um, brick explosion. Oops. You can call it whatever you want. Um, and so this is the collection of pieces. When a single brick is hit, this collection uh, will start. So we're going to, it needs a few fields, so it needs to know some things about itself. First of all, it needs to have an array list of all the pieces that are part of this one explosion. So we're going to have private array list brick piece. So an array list of brick pieces called pieces. And we need to import array list from the libraries. Then we also need, uh, do we need a color? No, we don't need a color. I believe we don't need a color. Nope. Um, private, then we need private int x, y. This is just the position of the explosion. And private map the map. Uh, so that again is just the single, like a reference to the only map that we're using. Oops, this is obviously capital. Uh, private map, the map. Oh, and this is also kind of a modifier to the game, right? It doesn't, it's not active all the time, so we need to know when it is active and when it is not. Uh, so we're going to say private boolean is active and private boolean uh, start, oops, not boolean long, start time. Because we don't want this explosion to last like forever, so we like we need to know when to stop drawing it. Um, so this is the constructor now, and so public the name of the class brick explosion. It's the explosion. It's a special method that's called whenever we need to create a new explosion, and we're going to pass over the starting point, the x int the y and we need to pass over from the game panel class the map because um, I'm not because we need to be able to pass the map to the brick pieces this class doesn't actually use the map but it needs to be able to hand it over to the other class so x the starting point in the x direction equals the x that's passed over and y equals the y that's passed over from the game panel class. So the game panel class is going to tell this class, hey, here's where I need you to explode. So it passes over an x and a y. And then we're going to say uh, this instance dot the map equals the map. And again, this is the field, this, this copy, this, this variable, the map, this reference equals the parameter of the map, that's how the syntax works, um, uh, is active. When it's created, it is active. So we're going to set that to true. And start time equals system.nanotime. And then we're going to initialize the actual array list of exploding objects, of brick pieces. So now we need to create that method, public void init. And uh, in this, we're just going to say, oh, we should just, uh, good practice is to initialize all the variables in the constructor. The AP test is going to want to know you, have you do that. So they don't always create an init, an init method. Um, you do when you're creating bigger classes. That's my understanding anyway. Um, but let's just do it kind of AP style here. Pieces equals, so any, any field that you create they want you to initialize in the constructor, which we do. We just use a different method sometimes to do it. But let's do it the <coughs> a little bit more formal way, or like AP-ish way. So pieces equals new array list brick piece. But then here, let's actually initialize the explosion. So here, th this method is going to be where we add a bunch of brick pieces to it. So int uh, rand num. I want to add a random number of pieces. I don't want these explosions to all look the same, so we're just going to add a random number of pieces every time one of these is created. So int rand num equals 
int math.random times, I just worked these numbers out to look okay, times 20 plus, plus 5. So that says, uh, this is the range, there are 20 possible sizes, and they start at 5. Not, no piece is going to be, uh, oh, never mind. This is the range of possible number of pieces. There could be up to 20 pieces. No. Oh, yeah, I just didn't want it to be 0. There can be 5 to 25 pieces. Uh, so that's the range, and that's the start point. 5 is the start point. So here we just want to do a loop for int i equals... We we'll start at zero. I is less than rand num I plus plus, and then each time through the loop, we want to add a uh, new piece to our array list. Pieces dot add new brick piece, and we want to pass over x, y, and the map each time because that's what our constructor calls for over in brick piece, right? Brick piece needs brick x, brick y. Uh, and the game map. Now, you might say, like, well, um, let's see, why are these doubles? Let's just change this to ints and see if we can make it work instead. So, because you can, uh, yeah, this is probably better. And we'll cast these to an int down here, just so that it's less confusing why I'm passing over integers and the computer doesn't care. Basically, yeah, this is cleaner. It, these should be integers. So over in brick piece, the fields should all be integers. And, oh, but that's why I had dx and dy not being integers. Okay, so dx and dy should not be integers. Okay, x and y can be integers, but dx and dy cannot be integers because gravity, I don't want it to be an integer. Um, okay, that's better. So, yep, I think that that will work. Um, we might have to come back and clean that up, but okay. Back over to the um, brick explosion class. So we have added a random number of pieces to our explosion uh, class, and now we need to update that class. So public void update, and all we're going to do in this method is two things. One, we're going to update each piece individually, and we're going to check if the timer is all out done. So uh, we're going to use one of those enhanced for loops again. We're going to say for brick piece pp colon pieces. And again, this just says go through the entire array list called pieces. And each time you find an item of type brick piece, just put that, reference that with bp. And then all we have to do is call bp.update. And each piece will now be updated. But well, we also need to be able to tell if the timer is uh, run out, if time is out. So we're going to say if system system dot, and the parentheses are important, system dot nano time minus start time divided by 1,000, or divided by, let's do 1 million, so six zeros, one, two, three, one, two, three, is greater than 2,000, two seconds, that's all I want it to be on the screen for, and the thing is active, Uh, and it's active, then we want to set is active to false because now it is no longer active. We also need a draw method because we need to be able to draw this public void draw brick explosion and this will get the main graphics tool from our whole game and we need to import that library, so import graphics 2D, and then all we need to do is an enhanced for loop again, brick piece, bp pieces, can you guess? All we do is bp dot draw. We also need to uh, be able to get at uh, whether or not it is active, so we're just going to have a public boolean return value get is active, and this is just going to return is active because that's going to be useful for the game panel class to know when it should stop drawing or when it should uh, delete this brick explosion 
item from its array list. And that is our complete class for Brick Explosion. In the next one, we'll actually add it to the game panel and get it working.